they think they can run the rest of the way with no more pit stops. Yeah, watch out for Dan Weldon coming in on the next slap and Dario Frakiti taking the lead. This is Dan Weldon coming in the pits, just like Jill said. I think you picked to win it. You are dead on today, my friend. I think I might change my winner pick again. <laughs> Usually wait for the white flag for that. And you see Dan Weldon go to a tear off. The 26 Klein tool car comes in, and that's where Jerry punches. And we'll watch and remember the critical member, member here is the fueler that got to get it full of fuel. He's burning a little more fuel than his teammates. Tires are on, fuel nozzle, they're waiting. Frankiti in turn four. Now, Frankiti should be coming down pit road next time. 7.11.9, and Weldon is down and away. Well, not quite as good as Scott Dixon, but a clean pit stop, and so he was he is away with 63 laps complete. So they are banking on 37 laps to the end with no more pits. Dan Weldon is currently running third, but he is complaining of a long break, and that means that he doesn't have much break, and he's having to hit that brake pedal well before he really wants to stop. So that's going to be an issue in these last uh, 10 laps. And Brian Herta, who's running fifth, is complaining of a loose race car. So that would lead me to believe, Jill DeFerrin, that it doesn't look good for either Weldon or Herta, two drivers in the top five. No, it doesn't. I think this looks good for Tony Canan, and my heartbeat is raising at the second here as they come to the green flag. Nine laps to go. Ryan Briscoe, number 33, your leader. How long can he hold on? Tony Canan, they come together, and it's Briscoe into the wall, and that time he paid the price. Tony Canan will take over the lead, but will we stay under a local yellow chicken as he's not happy there? Is it a situation that he had to do that because of his tires? Yeah, and, and yeah, what he paid the price for it. Excuse me, Joe, he paid the price for it because he ended up slowing up and his teammate Danny Weldon has gone by, but another part of me, excuse me, move, but you know something? He was angry for being blocked those two times, so he was just gonna barrel in there and say, I'm coming through, buddy. Scott, I'll ask you, because I know Jill will change his mind with the white flag. Would you have thought if there was any chance that Dan Weldon would be leading the race with five laps to go? Absolutely wouldn't, and you know, he actually had that different uh, pitch strategy before, but they also did that last year when he wasn't running very fast, didn't have a fast car at the beginning. At Richmond, came out on top and won that event, and you know, here he's done it again. He's been one of the brightest guys coming up in this last year, taking a lot of experience from his other drivers that he had on the team that had a wealth of knowledge to draw from, but you know something? He's young, aggressive, only 26 years old, and uh, he sets his sights on the Indianapolis 500. He'll be tough this year. Give Jill credit. He said that Tony Kanaan would definitely be someone to reckon with today, but Going back to where the whole briscoe Canon incident, here's where Tony Canon really probably got a little bit perturbed at Ryan Briscoe. See, that Tony is Canon, not his line, is it, Joe? Tony Canon was all the way down the inside already, and Ryan just keep pushing him uh, to the inside. And half a lap later, set. Tony says, I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. He tried to surprise him down the inside, and Ryan turns in like Tony wasn't even there. And, and Ryan had to see. Yeah, it's... It's a, it's a silly incident, let me put it this way. It's a two-man race here in the final lap here at the Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. The white flag is out. Who will it be? The Brit driver or the Brazilian? Jill, I know who you're pulling for, but this should be a great one. Another fastest lap for Dan Weldon here. He's inch perfect. I mean, he's doing everything he should be doing. That's, I have to say that when the chips are down, Dan Weldon is really producing the goods here. So we gave you a mulligan and you actually decided you want to change your driver vote, Joe? No, I don't want to change my driver but you got to give Dan Wilder his due. I mean, he's been faultless this last four or five laps. As soon as he got the lead, he's gone as fast as he did the whole race. And I'm telling you, right now he's really tired. The tires are, are getting worn out, the brakes are worn out, and for him to be able to do that is incredible. While we have the chance, my thanks go out to Gilles DeFerrin, Scott Goodyear, true the best in the business, and the finest pit reporters with Vince Welch, Jerry Punch, and Jamie Little as we watch Dan Weldon bring it around just two more turns, and it'll be Weldon's second victory on the year. Last turn for Dan Weldon. Dan Weldon brings it down the front straightaway. Your winner at the Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, Dan Weldon, picks up the victory, followed closely by his teammate, Tony Kanaan. Well, I tell you, Tony, I think he's happy because of the team and everything, but I'm sure he's not too happy with the whole incident that they had to run off course and down here off the lead. But I think a fantastic race for all those top three guys, really. Happy birthday to that man, Andretti Green. There are your unofficial results. Weldon Kanaan, Frank Keaty, and Herta. Andretti Green goes one through four with Mara Dixon and Rice coming up next Sports Center, next race, the Firestone Indy Japan 300, Saturday, April 30th, noon on ESPN.
For my colleagues, I'm Todd Harris saying so long from the Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Your winner, Dan Weldon, he owns the streets of St. Pete in 05. Two corners to do it, too, though. <laughs> <laughs> 